الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي لهبت في الله continuing on our درس in شرح السنه by Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala we reach the 27th point that Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah said and he said rahimahullah ta'ala wal iman bi anna al imana qawlan wa amalan wa amalu wa qawl wa niyatun wa asaba Yuzid wa yanqus wa yuzid ma sha Allah wa yanqus hatta la yabqa minhu shay'in Imam Baba Hari rahmatullahi alayhi said from the usul or aqidah of Ahl Sunnah he said rahmatullahi alayhi to have faith that iman or faith comprises of speech actions and beliefs. This is the Islamic belief. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. It increases and decreases. It increases as Allah wills and may decrease to the extent that nothing remains of it. Imam Al Laka'i reports in Shar Usul Al Itikara Ahl Sunnah, he said that Abdul Razak Al Sinani said, I met 70 from the ulama. From amongst them are Ma'mar, Al Uzai, Al Thawri, Al Walib ibn Muhammad al Qurayshi, Yazid ibn Al Sa'ib, Hamad ibn Salama, Hamad ibn Zayd, Sufyan ibn Ayyina, Shu'ayb ibn Harb, Waqi ibn Al Jarrah, Malik ibn Anas, Ibn Abi Layla, Ismail ibn Ayyash, Al Walid ibn Muslim, and those I have not named. All of them saying faith is saying and action, it increases and decreases. So this is the aqwal of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is how the Salaf they view. And included, of course, in actions, some of the Salaf they used to talk about actions of the heart. And this is what we mean by when we have our itikad or our iman in our heart, our faith in our heart, that's included in actions. Because that's referring to actions of the heart. There are actions of the heart, and then there's actions of the limbs. And then, as he said, uh, and statements of the tongue, of course. So this is the aqidah. That is bayan of the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. And this is what Imam Baba Hari was, was doing, rahmatullah and many imams of the Salaf. Uh, affirm this principle in their books, in their treatises. Abdullah ibn Ahmed reports in his uh, book, A Sunnah, My father narrated to me, Abu Salama al Khaza'i related to us, saying, Malik, Sharik, Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash, Abdulaziz ibn Abi Salama, Hamad ibn Salama, and Hamad ibn Zayd said, Faith is conviction, declaration, and action. So again, those same parts, those same components make up our iman. That iman, iman, ta'ala sunnati wa jama'ah, is comprised of statements on the tongue. And it's comprised of, uh, of course, the belief in the heart and actions of the limbs. All those things make up iman. al Lakai reports that Uqba ibn uh, Al-Qama said, I asked Al Uzai about Iman or faith. <coughs> Can it increase? He said, Yes, until it becomes like the mountains. I said, Can it decrease? He said, Yes, even until nothing remains of it. So, Ahabatifillah, this shows us that Iman, to Ahlu Sunnah, it increases and decreases, and it's comprised of those uh, components which we already mentioned. Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, Ta'ala, he mentions in his explanation, 
He says, "Mimma yajibu ala al-abd iman bihi wa itqadihi an al-iman qawlan wa 'amalan wa itqad yuzid bi ta'a wa yanqus bil ma'siyah wa yuzid bi ta'a hatta yusir amthal al-jibal wa yanqus bil ma'siyah hatta la yabqa minhu illa anna min mithqal dhurr wa kan la yabqa minhu shay." So the Shaykh Yuqarr he agreed and he affirmed to the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah by saying from what is an obligation for the servant is to believe in and have iman and itikad that iman or faith is comprised of statements actions and belief and it increases with obedience to Allah and it decreases with disobedience to Allah. <coughs> until it reaches the port, the point, hatta yasira amthala jibal. Until it reaches the level when it's increasing, that it reaches the level of the mountains. And this is exactly as uh, taken from those statements of the Salaf. Showing us that the Salafi Aqidah, the Salafi Minhaj, is one with the madhab of the salaf. It's one. And then he said, and it decreases with sinfulness until that what remains of it is just the, the amount of a, um, a date palm seed or a small seed and it is possible that nothing remains of it. Meaning that a person can be into so many sins and it can go to the level where they have no Iman, they leave Iman. For example, the person he's doing adultery. First he started off, he fell into the sin. Then the sin perhaps becomes a habit. The fact that it becomes a habit does not mean this person is a disbeliever, it just means they are doing wicked sins. They're doing the major sins and it's wicked. But then if this sin reaches to the point where the person believes that sin is now lawful for them, then they have disbelieved. Because now they've made istihlal, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned and gave uh, explanation of what it means to make istihlal. This is making the unlawful lawful. So they've made the unlawful lawful for them, themselves. So that's a, one example of how that sin can be disbelief. And Shaykh al-Islam also said, Al Ma'asi Barid al Kufr, that sinfulness is the means to disbelief. And so, one of the ways that that, that, can, that that can be is if a person sins to the extent that they begin to believe that their sin is no longer a sin, that it's something lawful. Another situation, a habitifillah, is when a person is in those sins, and this is what happens to some of our brothers and sisters, and this is why I say never give up. Never give up. That's why it's important to know these issues of Aqidah. It's very important, even though some of the people belittle these things, belittle Aqidah, but it's very important to teach Aqidah. And even some of the, uh, some of the, the Qiq Masail, or those, those very intricate details, is, some, is, is important for us to know. It doesn't mean all Muslims need to know the intricacy of all matters of Aqidah. No. But still someone has to teach it. And someone has to learn it. We need students of knowledge. Tulab al ilm need this. And Mashaykh have to have this. Because we need someone to go back to when it comes to these issues, these Messiah al -Daqiq. And it also lets you know how to determine to make Ahkam, or not that you're going to make Ahkam, but at least in, in the, the, the minor practical affairs in your life to know. To know whether someone asks you and says, hey, am I, be I, don't, I, you know, I believe in Allah, but I'm in so much sin and I really think that drinking alcohol is, is good for me and I am uh, accepting that I'm a drunkard and I believe that it's, it's halal now because I've been doing it so long and it really it doesn't faze me and I can still pray. So a person needs to know whether how to advise someone and tell them about the danger of this and also the danger of the fact that, hey, you've now 
fell, fallen into disbelief. doesn't mean that this person is now going to make a hukum on them, that they're a disbeliever, but then they should take that to the ulama, advise the person, of course, and take it to the ulama so that they know how to deal with these things. That these minor issues of uh, aqidah to some people, it, it may seem minor, and sometimes they are intricate details, but we do need to know them, and we still need to teach them. Because the ilm is there for a reason, and the ilm is not is there to be shared. <laughs> going back to the mas'ala, so if someone, what happens sometimes to our brothers and sisters is they get involved so much in these sins, especially the major sins, that they find that they're addicted, that they can't leave it, uh, addicted to adultery, <coughs> addicted to pornography, addicted to drugs and alcohol. Those things are not easy to leave. Possibly even an addiction to music. But I think, you know, for everyone, their sins are different and, and the difficulty with leaving those sins is different. But I think some of those sins are clearly uh, much more difficult to leave than others. But however, it's possible. So never give up hope. But also know that it's a very dangerous path, as Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, that ma'asi barid al-kufr, because it leads to disbelief, because either you can end up making it lawful, or the heart, the heart becomes so hard. This is the point I wanted to make. So some of our brothers and sisters, they get so much in sin, they, they feel they're not worthy. I mean, I can't pray anymore. I'm, I just got too many sins. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed with the wrong people. You know, I, I'm not ready to come back to the masjid. So then that's their first distancing. They distance themselves from the masjid. And they distance themselves from the jama'ah Muslims. Okay? Because they feel their sins have now uh, uh, clouded them. And this, this happens. This is very real. Then it may lead to the point, they're like, hey, I'm embarrassed too. I got a girlfriend. I can't go around the brothers anymore. I don't want to be seen around the brothers. I won't even walk around those masajid or those places where Muslims are. And then it becomes a degree, to the degree they don't even give salams to other Muslims because they're trying to be undercover, undercover with their sin. Then it reaches to the point that, because the heart is getting harder all this time, because they're not, they're not giving the heart a break by doing some good deeds and following up the good, perhaps. This is one case scenario. So then the heart becomes so hard that they begin to abandon everything praying all together. First they were at least praying. Then I know many situations uh, of people who have told me and, and, and in the beginning stages of our Islam, we know the situations brothers and sisters go through. And I know many brothers who did pray. They, they were praying. And they even if they committed Allah, they were committing adultery and they were doing things like this foulness and zina they would right after right after May ghusl and pray rakatain, even with a non-Muslim woman in the room, and possibly even the sisters might fall into the same situation. Those people who had some iman. So that shows you where iman and 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 and, and sinfulness where they mix. They mix and it get mixed up. And of course you want your iman, your 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 uh strong amen to overcome the sinfulness until you can get rid of that sinfulness and especially the major sins. So it comes to a state, a habit of Allah, as we see, as we, as we witness countless times, and I know many people who were Muslim, who are no longer Muslim, especially women, where the heart became hard and it was from a state of embarrassment. Then it just trickled because you begin to put barriers to when then, then they leave the prayer. So some of those people, at least, they were making rakatain after they committed zina. And they were making rakatain after they came from the club. But then, after a while, if you keep in those sins, you lose that rakatain. You stop making that rakatain, maybe you're still praying. Then after a while, it becomes harder and harder to pray because it's going, wait a minute, the club's getting ready to open. I don't have time to pray at Isha and Mavrim. I got to get ready. You know, that becomes a priority till they leave the prayer. So then we already know the Prophet said, Whoever leaves the prayer is disbelieved. And, the, and some of the ulama 
they say that that is, that is the major disbelief, meaning that a person who no longer prays is a disbeliever, and some of the ulama say they're a wicked sinner. They're just in major, major sins, and they need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahabatifillah, the point being that ma'asi, it'll cloud your heart, and it hardens your heart to a state to where you, you may not even, uh, you may go to disbelief. You may no longer do any of the wajib. You leave the wajibat, and you engage in more and more in Muharramah because it becomes easy. Because if you stop praying, what's left after that? That's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're doing major sins, then it's easy. Okay, you weren't drinking alcohol. You were committing a zina. That was testing you. The test with the opposite sex. Then after that, you began to smoke a little weed because, hey, you've already given up on prayer. You, you kind of want to reminisce on the old days. So you begin to smoke weed. Now you've got two you know, more covering of the, the heart. And it shows us that the, the, uh, the, uh, the heart, that the heart is very important, and it's a very important part of the iman. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ala wa hiya qalb. When he was talking, he said, Inna fi jizn mudgatin. Fi the salaha salaha jizn akullu, wi the fasid a fasid a jizn akullu, Ala wa hiya qalb. The Prophet ﷺ said, In the body is a morsel of flesh. If it, uh, if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, then the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. So that's that's what that's the case uh, of, of uh, for some of our brothers and sisters, and that's what happens when we allow that sinfulness to overtake us, and that shows us that uh, our our iman goes down with masia. So iman does fluctuate. And it goes up with obedience. You feel good when you're doing dawah. You feel good when you're praying. You feel good when you've done a good deed and you've you spent fisa bilillah and you sacrifice this fisa bilillah. You sacrifice your life fisa bilillah. These things make your iman go up. You feel good in those times. You made hajj. You made umrah. You feel good. And the sinfulness, if you have iman, the person who's still on iman is still a Muslim, then they feel some, they feel, uh, you know, they feel crunchy. They feel sad. They feel, you know, depending on the level of their iman is how it affects them. If they have high level of iman to a, a general degree, then when they've done, they fell into a major sin or whatever, they feel really bad. You know, they may not be able to face, they might even be able to leave their room. They smoked weed that one time after 15 years of leaving weed or something. Or they fell into something, their desires got so strong and they fell into zina after holding on for so long. They feel bad. They, some people, they want to kill themselves almost. So they may even want to do another sin because they feel so terrible. And others, it's not a big deal. They, they, wash, they sweep it away like flies. Their sinfulness. So we have to beware the ma'asi and the noob and know that our iman fluctuates. And, and, and iman is comprised of our statements. It's comprised of our, our actions. And it's comprised of our... <coughs> actions of the heart. And the Shaykh mentioned a lot of uh, fuwaid here about the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah and the Aqidah of those groups like the Murjia. And we'll just mention the Murjia very quickly that as the Shaykh mentions, he said, from Murjia to wife. He said, the Murjia, there are different levels of irja or there's different levels of people who have this Aqidah of the Murjia. The Murjia, he says, Min hum ghulat wa min hum murjia fuqaha. Al Ghulat, meaning the extreme Murjia, are those people who say that Iman does not uh, at all have uh, enter into your faith. And they believe that a person, when they do, uh, say, that everyone's a mu'min. Everyone who says the Shahada is a mu'min. They're a believer to them. Regardless of what they do, They're, they don't believe. That, uh, that faith fluctuates and they believe either you're a full mu'min, a full believer or you are a full or you're a disbeliever there's no in between there's no gradation of iman to them it's either you're a full believer because you said the shahada khalas no, no problem, you're at the club you're drinking, you got fake hair you got tattoos, you're smoking weed you're committing zina, you're doing this you're doing this, hey doesn't affect your iman as long as in your heart you believe, even if you're not practicing. This is irja. 
Okay? Because they've now taken Iman out of the equation. I mean, they've taken uh, actions out of the equation of Iman. And then there's the Murjia of Fuqaha, and this is referring to those uh, scholars of fiqh, some of the scholars, some of the early scholars in fiqh, some of them fell into and held the belief that Iman huwa tasdiq, tasdiq bi qalb, wa qul bi lisan. And this is also similar, and this is why this is a type of irja, and that al uh, amal laysa min al iman. So the murjiya fuqaha, these were a group of scholars of fiqh who held the belief that iman is just uh, tasdiq, just believing. And that it is also a statement of the tongue. It's a statement of the tongue. So if you take the shahada and in your heart you say you're a believer, you have uh, iman, then that's sufficient. Even if you didn't practice, even if you didn't, uh, you didn't do uh, actions like salat or other actions uh, of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they've taken iman out of the equation. Ahabatifillah, this is against the aqeed of ahl sunnati wa jama'ah. And it is very important for us to understand this and beware of that aqeed and share that with our brothers and sisters because many of our brothers and sisters in this day and age uh, are affected by that creed of irja, meaning that they believe. You know, how many people have we seen, have we seen outside of the club, or sisters that don't wear hijab, or brothers that do all kind of stuff, smoke weed and different things, and they say, hey, he, he has his girlfriend on his left hand, he says, hey, you don't know what's in my heart, bro. Or he's smoking weed right in front of you, he says, hey, man, you, you really don't know what's in my heart. I really don't want to hear that, brother. You know, I don't have to wear hijab. I can wear these tight jeans. You don't know what's in my heart. See you later, I'm going to the club. Beyonce's getting ready to play, I'm going. Because they believe that Iman is sufficient to have it on their tongue and what's left in their heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And may Allah guide us and guide our brothers and sisters in, in, in Islam. And may Allah forgive us for our many sins. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. And anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم